South Africa can create 500,000 new jobs over 10 years through globally traded services. This was one of the key findings of the South Africa in the Digital Age or SADA process. And to unpack this or to try and understand this a little bit more, I'm jo joined in studio by Stefan Malhaber. He's the co-director of South Africa in the Digital Age and founder of Genesis Analytics. Stefan, welcome. Thank you for your time this Thank afternoon. You. Mm. So 500,000 new jobs uh, in the next or over 10 years sounds fantastic, but what mm. is SADA and what are globally traded services? Mm. So SADA is an initiative that was created to answer a very simple but important question. And that is, if we are going to lose a lot of jobs through technological change, yeah. where are the new jobs going to come from? Because one knows from these massive industrial revolutions that you lose as well as gain. So it was really aimed at answering that particular question. It's a joint venture or partnership, if you wish, of Gibbs, the business school, of Genesis, the economic consultancy, and also of the Pathways for Prosperity Commission, which is an Oxford-based commission which is asking exactly that question globally. Are we ready for 4IR? You know, no country in a sense is ready for, for something as, as large as that. Um, perhaps what I should mention is that in, in the work that we did, we were not focused only on 4IR, at the heart of which is artificial intelligence. Yes. We were also focused on other possibilities that digitization could, could, could bring South Africa, both for income and for jobs. So. When you speak about globally traded services, because you, you're not just talking about 4IR, as you've said, how can we create more of these uh, globally traded services to get more people in this line of work? Mm. So, so to explain what, what globally traded services is, it's the simplest version of that is a call center. Mm -hmm. And why is it globally traded services? Because these are services that are delivered by South Africans in South African settings often in something that looks a lot like a call center, sometimes even their own home. But the clients and the customers of those services are sitting anywhere in the world. Mm. So something that most South Africans don't know is that there are probably about 4,000 South Africans who wake up every morning in Cape Town and Johannesburg, and they provide English tutoring to Chinese adults wanting to learn English in, um, in China. So that's an example of the kind of services that are now globally traded because of digitization, telecoms, and the way that the world now works. Because when you say call center, I immediately think of that rather annoying, unfortunately, mm. call mm. you get for mm. somebody, with somebody trying to sell you something mm. on the other end of the line, mm. which is a very, very difficult thing to try and do. Mm. So, but that's not specifically what you're referring to when you say call centers. So call, you, you have inbound and outbound call centers, um, and you have call center agents that that either try to sell you something, but very often are there to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a very basic form of globally traded services. But there are many, many other, other kinds of such services. So coding, for example, mm -hmm. um, personalized services, the type of tutoring that I mentioned now. So it's a whole host. And what technology is doing is it's vastly increasing the, the range of, of those services and therefore the opportunities for South Africans. And SADA is working with government in this, am I correct? So there's a willingness from a government to uh, become a technology hub. Yes, yes, absolutely. We've been working very closely with parts of government, such as the Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Communications. And there's a very evident willingness and also action on the part of government to, to build this industry and to bring these jobs to South Africa. And there's been tremendous success. So, you know, in this world of global business services, there are 250,000 South Africans employed at the moment. Of those 50,000, are in the globally traded services. In other words, they are servicing those offshore clients. Mm. And that's a number that's growing by 24% a year, which is extraordinary. And the reason for that is because of very close cooperation between government on the one hand and the industry, which has an industry body called PEPESA on the other. So government is certainly playing a, a big and very constructive part. So more and more we're moving away from sort of brick and mortar type of jobs or industries and into this field of technology. Yes, and you know there are, there are some people who work on this globally who call this industry without smokestacks. Okay. Which gives you that sense <laughs> yeah. of, of, of what it looks like. And it looks very different and very often policymakers need to get their head around it that this is not 
the kind of job that one envisaged 20 or 30 years ago. But these are often very good jobs. People are paid often significantly or always significantly above the minimum wage. It's excellent for young people. You need nothing more than a South African matric as a formal qualification, plus, um, uh, plus some training which might be as, uh, as short as six months. And people usually graduate from these type of call center jobs to something better. Mm. So then are our schools equipping young people who may not be interested or maybe can't afford to or don't have the opportunity to go to an institute of higher learning mm. to perhaps look at something like this? Mm. So it's, it's a mixed answer. I think for, for a whole host of, of jobs of perhaps the call center type, uh, the South African matriculants I think are actually very well suited to it. Also for an interesting reason that is it plays to our strengths as a, as a people. Mm. It plays to our linguistic abilities and it also plays to our, our warmth and interpersonal skills. So in the world of, of globally traded services, of global business services, South Africa is seen as a high quality provider, higher quality in terms of what the, what the agents do than for example um, uh, our competitors in India and even the Philippines uh, which have much larger industries at this point. Is security something, tech security, is that something people should be concerned about if we're approaching this era of, like you say, 20 to 30 years ago, normal jobs like we know mm. them now mm. perhaps are going into this sort of realm. Is mm. technological security something people mm. should be worried about mm. or looking into? And by security you mean personal security in terms of, of am I going to have an income? And, and also just data security, um, technological security mm. from a data point of view. Well, yes, massively so. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, there's no doubt that as a country we have to, to look very clearly at what the positives and the negatives are of all of these new technologies. Yeah. And surveillance is an incredibly important part of these business models often, which is worrying. But on the other hand, you know, the kind of electronic internet platforms that we have in many industries now uh, are really transforming, rewiring how, how entire sectors, sectors work, how services are delivered. And that has a tremendous liberating effect because it brings into the economic net people who would otherwise not be able to access markets. But now if you're a single driver, you can access thousands and thousands of potential customers through Uber or through Taxify. And you have exactly the same through Airbnb and other platforms. However, many of those platforms, particularly the ones that are aimed at various forms of advertising, are also gathering, as we all now know, massive amounts of data about the people that use them. And that certainly needs to be regulated in future. Yeah, absolutely. Stefan, thank you very much. It's very interesting and uh, certainly a field of interest that people perhaps need to start uh, paying more attention to. Stefan Malherber, he's uh, co-director of South Africa, the Digital Age and founder of Genesis Analytics. Thank you for your time. Thank you.